Hey everybody, welcome back to Small Talk Japan. Today we got some great news topics to cover, so let's dig in. Uh, we got a Fukuoka man who led secret life supported uh, who, and supported his family through burglary for 10 years. Burglary. Burglary. Wow. Okay, Japanese man breaks into school to recover stuff. A teacher took him from him uh, over 40 years ago. That's a, that's a grudge if it's I've a, ever seen one. It's a long time. Japan, US, uh, I launch a ministerial talks on economy. Okay. We've also got the Japan's land ministry officials who've been punished over statistics uh, with a tampering scandal. But were they really? Were they actually punished? Who knows? Record 88% of J Japanese feel friendly <laughs> towards US. China, not so much. No, maybe not. Um, also, a Miyagi restaurant which refuses to accept customers' money after the tsunami warning evacuation. Uh, also, uh, from Studio Ghibli, uh, a creepy no-face snowman, which was shared on their social media. Uh, our top story today is actually a interact, interact, I don't In, know the word. Interact. Interact. I think. The ALT dispatch company, uh, they had a no, don't be sick video that was leaked uh, to Reddit and we will be reading some of the comments and it's actually pretty salacious. Should be pretty interesting. Uh, and finally, a $4,000 cat human hybrid bed. Why? <laughs> Let's roll that intro. Uh, Alex, no hating on cats, okay? Yeah, well, you know, well, not a fan. Not a fan. Dude, we, uh, dude this, this, it, 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 interact. Interact. I wouldn't call it interact, you know what I mean? I think that's the idea behind the name, right, originally. Interact. Interact. Oh, man, uh, dude, we could just wait until I get to the comments on that. It's, like, incredibly bad. Well, I've not read it, so I'm looking forward to hearing. You haven't seen the video, have you? No. Oh, man, I got taken down. We're here to talk about it. Okay, so here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to Small Talk Japan. On this talk, uh, on this show, we talk about all things Japan in English. Uh, my name is Mitch, and this is my co-host. Hello, Alex. And we're going to talk today about something that Josh wrote for me. So I'm under duress. I'm blinking torture while I read this. I'm kidding. <laughs> Uh, Josh actually went way out of his way to set up a uh, Patreon for us, so uh, here's the information. For all of you that want to support Small Talk Japan, we have started a Patreon. Uh, we love making this show and would like to make more great content in the future with your help. Uh, rewards range from getting your name in the credits and a monthly thank you video to jo for joining us on Discord, uh, to joining us on Discord and getting access with live chats. Uh, and even working with us to add something to our YouTube set. So like, you know, back here, this totally practical real it's very real set coming at you from daytime tokyo in the evening from southern japan uh ask alex what he would add to the set what would you add to the set what would i add to the set <laughs> i don't know um the idea i had i can't probably say on um <laughs> alex you know he you have a very prestigious job you have you have two jobs yeah one of them is your company the other one's like uh, let's just say a world heritage mm -hmm. place because it is mm -hmm. every time we do the show i'm always thinking like is this the time that alex gets fired yeah is, is he gonna get canceled this no, time I, I think that as well but... <laughs> you think that as well yeah but I'm, I'm, yeah, being careful. So if you are able to help, uh, help us out, it says help us or, but it actually, I think it was out. Uh, click on the link in the description below to check us out. Patreon slash uh, Small Talk Japan. Thank you so much. So check us out on Patreon. Uh, I actually never thought to make a Patreon for this this channel because we just do it because we love it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, Josh uh, mentioned it once. He's like, hey, we should do it because he, uh, some of his favorite channels do Patreon. He's like, we should do it too. I'm like, okay, cool. So we're going to try it out. So let's get right into the news. So let's, the first story today is going to be this Fukuoka man who led a secret life in order to support his family through burglary for 10 years. Uh, so this is from Fukuoka. Uh, let me just read the story. A family of five who appeared to neighbors as enjoying a happy home had been actually supported for 10 years by their fa father's burglarizing houses. It's such a hard word to say, burglary, burglarizing. Burglarizing. It's, a, it's like a tongue, tongue twister. Uh, what were the tactics of the man who went uh, out at dusk to regularly steal? It's a question mark. Uh, and, and what did he think of his family and children after he was arrested? And sent, uh, what, did his, uh, what did he think of his family and children after he was arrested and sentenced to prison? A Mainichi Shimbun reporter uh, covered the trial and followed up on the case. On December 7, 2021, uh, at a Fukuoka District Court Iz Izuka branch, a judge sentenced an unemployed man living in Fukuoka Prefecture to, of Izuka to two years and six months in prison for theft and breaking into residences. Wait until you hear the amount that this guy got. So for all of his shenanigans, he stole a total of 7.1 million yen. So that's about 
six hundred and seventy thousand dollars US. Mm. Mm, ish let's just call it that um yeah. so it's like it's it's over six hundred fifty thousand dollars us uh and this is over a 10-year span and it were the the pre, the fukuoka prefectural police have confirmed a total of 250 cases of damage from bu- burglaries that the man was allegedly involved in okay so what was he stealing <laughs> just stuff from their houses i don't know but like he lived a life of crime uh, like, let's call it lowbrow Ocean's Eleven, mm-hmm. okay? Uh, and it, no one, maybe his wife knew, but no one seemed to really know. He was like, like, like keeping up with the Joneses, Joneses style, just everyday family man. Uh, but in, his real job was just stealing crap. Hmm. And the most amazing thing about this, he only got two and a half years in prison. That's a slap on the wrist, isn't it? For... In, in your home country of the, of the Great Britain. Yes. If someone stole six hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of stuff, how long would they go to jail for? I'd guess more than two years, but I can't say because I'm not a judge or a barrister, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think. The but, United States. I think if it's your first try at it, the whole crime life, judge might be like first try at crime <laughs> for ten years. It's quite a long span. Might be like you know what yeah. I mean? I don't know. It's like, but then it doesn't talk about reparations, but maybe he, he does. Anyway, discussion topic. How are Japanese cr- criminals different from your home country? So can you talk about jail in the UK? Is yeah, because I've got so much experience of no, it. No, no, but know, like, I come just, on. No, no. We've, we've got like jail, <laughs> like prison know. TV shows on Netflix and everything. You can see the inside. Of it. American jail is a pretty hardcore place. Yeah, I guess they are in any country, really. Not the know. Nordic countries. It's like a hotel. That's pretty cushy, right? Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. murdered five people right this way. Here's your five star room. Yeah. Steak dinner every evening. Is that what it is? I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it, it, compared to the United <laughs> States penal system, it is. But yeah, how are Japanese criminals different? I don't know. You know, well, the Japanese for a start. Well, yeah. It's a big difference. Um, once, like, a guy tried to break into my house. Really? Yeah. Do tell. So. <laughs> So what you've got a, you got a, a very large esque house here in Japan. No, it was, it was the old house I used to live in when I first uh, sec- my second house when I was in Japan. So how many houses does this guy have? Quite a few. Okay. No, no, no. no. Uh, I've lived in a few. Okay. So there was a back door backing onto like a dark street, um, and next to the back door there was a desk, and I had my computer on the desk, and I was just sat there tapping away in my underwear, drinking a beer, um, with a wooden sword propped up next to me as well. As, as you it, do, as you do. This guy just opened the back door and like walked in with a mask on and sunglasses. And I thought like, who's that? It must be like, <laughs> is, it, is it the wife's dad who's just come around to say hello or something? Were you thinking, my date's a little early. He's not supposed to be here yet. Yeah, I was like, what? So I just kind of stood up and he kind of looked around to the left and saw like a white dude in his underwear yeah. with a beer can in one hand and a wooden sword in the other. And he just shit himself and ran out the door. At wait, wait, full he speed. didn't go. Did he go out the door he came in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So he ran back and I ran after him. And the car was out on the main street running, waiting there with the door open. So he just hopped in that and sped off. Um, and then the police came around and, you know. You know, you know, this has never happened to me. So, you know, it's not appropriate here. Well, oh, so they did, like took uh, footprints off the floor and measured his shoe size. I always wonder why they do that. Like, what are they going to do with that? And maybe he's got a rare brand of sneakers on. Okay. <laughs> but they said, uh, oh, no, it's a Chinese guy who lives in Ira, is what their response was. So I was like, are you going to catch him? And they were like, nah, we don't know who it is. Wait, wait, how did. Okay. So, how do you know it's a foreigner? <laughs> So weird. How did they know that he's? For, how did they know this? Did they just like? They didn't. They just said it. I think they just like gleaned this from the ether. They're just like, oh, I think it's a Chinese guy living in a different city. So I was like, okay. But they kept asking me, did he have a knife? Did he have a knife? And I was like, no, I don't think so. I had a big wooden sword, so you know, <laughs> what's he gonna do with it anyway? What? It- I've never heard this story before, and all the and all the times that we've drank together, like really? hung out. Yeah, I've never heard the ah. supposed the the alleged Chinese Ira man. Yeah, because I picked up a rock when he was driving away and threw it at his car. Yeah, and I think it cracked his window. So then it, they could have checked it. up on this, right? Go to his yeah. house. Is there a crack in the back of your sh- uh, your car? Can I see your shoes? But they were like, "What was the number on the car?" And I was like, "Oh, I can't remember." And then they were like, "What kind of car was it?" And I was like, "Oh, I can't remember. I think it was light green, but I don't know." <laughs> I didn't. You're like, I was kind of in a panic. Everybody, yeah. you didn't really notice that kind of thing. In Time, Think so. about, you know, license plates in Japan is they're actually difficult to read because they'll have like four numbers and then a hiragana character. Yeah. <laughs> so if you don't, and the hiragana character is really tiny. So if you don't see that, 
Is it possible 50 combinations? 46 <laughs> combinations, right? Yeah. Do they do katakana too? I don't know. No idea. <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah, I don't know why they do license plates like that. It seems like really hard to find criminals that way. Yeah. So anyway, it was a, an isolated incident. That was the only an thing isolated that, incident. that's ever happened to me here. And uh, it, it ended in hilarity. So. Well, as long as you... But the thing is, that's kind of scary. Though. I mean, what if it was just like, a, you know, a couple like women home? Yeah, yeah, it would have been scary, I think. Yeah. Right. It might have been this guy. It might have might been, been this, been this guy. guy. Yeah. Mother. There okay. you go. Yeah, right. 10 years ago. All right, next story, Mr. Right. Alex. What have we got? So here we are. We've got a Japanese man who... Also burglary. ...breaks into school to recover stuff a teacher took from him over 40 years ago. Mm. So that was when I was two years old. <laughs> um, it, the story says an intoxicated man and woman, uh, 63 and 58 years old respectively, broke into their middle school alma mater... Uh, with the explicit intent to retrieve confiscated contraband from over 40 years ago. The man who was arrested with his 58-year-old girlfriend for trespassing said he wanted to find the contact information for his old teacher in order to get his confiscated things back. It seems these two are drinking and reminiscing about the past. So, you know, whenever I get drunk, I always think, you know what? My middle school teacher who took that pen away from me, I really need to settle that score. Yeah, I've got to find out. All and these 50 some odd, 40 some odd years later. And assume he works at the same school, which is hilarious. <laughs> no, because like if you think about it, this man is 63 years old. OK, so if you assume 40 years ago, his teacher was at the earliest 20s. Yeah. Right. So you add 20 to 40, 60. The teacher's retired. Yeah. There's no way that person's there. Not yeah, only yeah. that, whatever this teacher took from this old man is long gone. Yeah. So... What's going on? So, and what amazes me about this story is not only do you have like this old guy who's like getting drunk and he's like, I'm going to go back to my middle school and, you know, settle the score. But also he convinces another rational, supposedly rational human being yeah. <laughs> to go with him. 63 and 58 is a pretty, you know, decent age to be going breaking into schools. Right? If, if it's you like know. 22 and 21, you might get it, right? Kind of understand. But yeah. It's like, guys. In a way, I kind of respect him, though. You, you know, it. rebellious streak. <laughs> Screw you, society. Oh, God. <laughs> but, okay, so this is 40 years ago. I'm only 38. I think that's my age. I think I'm 38. So I'm 38 now, right? Yeah. So 40 years ago, I'm not even born. I can't even remember, like, my junior high school, let alone Hell yeah. if you're 63, remembering your junior. This must have made a really big impact on him. I'm going to wait got taken off him. Maybe it was what was big 40 years ago. I don't know. Play yeah. Bubble gum or something. Okay. <laughs> Playing cards. C candy cigarettes. Candy cigarettes. Real cigarettes. Those, probably. That, that, those, those cards that, that for the Japanese card games, I don't understand the rules that have patterns and colors on them. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? I it's, mean, is this before TV? No, it's not before TV. Is it before TV? <laughs> no, I'm joking. It's before um, video games and all the interesting stuff. Yeah, way before that. Yeah, that. What is that called? Hanafuda? Ha Hanafuda? Hanafuda. Yeah, I have no... Every time somebody tries to explain to me the rules of that game, I'm always like, Psh, that doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, card games do my head in, man. Like Uno and stuff like that. Dude, Uno I doesn't just wanna, do... I just want to rip Uno to bits. Every time Uno I see is it. easy enough, but that Hanafuda game, they're just like, okay, if you have this pattern and this shape and this whatever, then this is more... I'm like, I don't know. Whatever. Yeah, but with Uno, though, you'll get the card and I'll be like, I'll get it, but I just don't care. I don't um, care. You know, why am I supposed to care about this? Have you ever gone like gambling at like a casino with like actual card games? I once, yeah, but then I left immediately because I lost. Yeah, I can't do casinos. Like I'm from Vegas and I just can't do casinos. I'm just, I get irritated. Well, that's because the house always wins. Oh it? yeah. Unless it's craps and you're really good at it. Japan, US, I launch a ministerial talks on economy. So this is really boring, but I want to talk about this really quick. Prime Minister F uh, Fumio Kishida, my favorite person. We love him. Don't we're you? being positive today. My favorite person. Uh, and U.S. Uh, President Joe Biden are expected to agree on the launch of mysterial, mysterial, mis, mis, ministerial. ministerial talks on economic issues when they hold a virtual summit on Friday, Japanese government so sources said. So basically what they're going to do is they're going to do the so-called two plus two security dialogue in involving the country's foreign and defense chiefs. It's all aimed at strengthening bilateral cooperation amid rising economic and military influence of China. Mm hmm. Which is good, you know. It's cool, you know. Let's have more strong, like strong relations between the West and let's just say China. Uh, it's good, good. But uh, I just don't think it's going to go anywhere because you know, even though I vi I voted for Mr. Biden, he is kind of sleepy these days. He's useless, man. <laughs> Absolutely useless. Not going to get into this. I voted for him, but he's a little sleepy. Let's just call him Grandpa Biden. 
Yeah. He's a little, don't know if he's going to be able to get things done, but Kashida is also equally useless. So good luck. Well, we've got a trio of useless people in charge of countries at the moment. Your current prime minister had a cocktail party and then went in front of parliament saying it wasn't a cocktail party and yeah. I wasn't there. Yeah, I know. Even though there's pictures of him at the fucking cocktail party. Well, he's on the down now. He's uh, public opinions at rock bottom, I think, for old Boris Johnson. So yeah, well. What can you do? Let's go to the next story. All right. So uh, I've got a story starting with uh, Japan's land ministry officials punished over statistics tampering scandal. But were they really? Um, and it says uh, the Japanese land ministry on Friday punished 10 officials in connection with a decades long rewriting of statistics that may have led the country's gross domestic product figures to be miscalculated. Uh, Vice, Minister, uh, Vice Minister Kunihiro Yamada and nine other officials received punishments such as pay cuts and reprimands, while Land Minister Tetsuo Saito will voluntarily run four months pay, return four months pay, uh, as well as a bonus. <coughs> so for over 20 years, the Ministry of Land Infrastructure, Transport and Tourism had rewritten or overstated data when compiling its monthly construction orders, uh, according to fi findings of uh, the third party panel that investigated the matter so so uh let's talk about this so their actual reprimands were like their actual punishment was like they were reprimanded so like, yeah until the next page. yeah they were just like basically told off and then like they gave up a, a little bit of their salary mm -hmm. for 20 fucking years of lying yeah that's quite a long time and so this actually has huge implications because if you don't like it says the, the monthly construction order is one of 53 key economic figures compiled by the government are calculated using data submitted every month from uh, about 12,000 businesses. Mm. So these these key 53 indicators then go in to inform the calculation of the country's GDP. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you overinflate your GDP, China, China, <laughs> looking at your China, um, then there's a lot of there's a lot of benefit to that uh, that you can get if you have an overinflated GDP. Um, and then they've been doing this for 20 years, and they just say sorry. I'm about to give a bonus up, four months pay. Mm -hmm. It's not that much, is it? Really, if you. Well, how much are they getting paid? Well, that's the other question. That's the other question. Who knows? Yeah, nine people receive punishments. Well, you know, I mean, this kind of thing goes on in uh, the business, especially construction industry. I think it's which know, is mainly bent, run right? by like a lot of yakuza or yakuza type people. You know, it's like a lot of gangsterism in, in construction here. Yeah. So, so like one say. of the discussion topics is similar to the scandal where the test scores were adjusted to allow more male students into the Tokyo Medical University. You remember that? Yeah, I do actually. Yeah. What do you think about this versus that? Well, it's a similar thing isn't it really you know covering up uh the reality of the data and then manipulating it for your own ends but i mean i suppose it happens in governments all over the world but um in japan the kind of slap on the wrist tends to be quite light nobody loses a job which is you know? weird yeah you'd or, expect or, it to be stricter actually wouldn't you or but, they come out in front of the cameras they put their head down really low and bow. fake cry and say they're sorry and then loads of cameras push, 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 for light. and then it's done yeah and then finished so yeah You've got a comment at the bottom, Japanese white collar crime versus blue collar crime. What do you mean by that? So I feel like in Japan, a lot of the, the there's not a lot of blue collar crime. There's not a lot of like th petty thefts, you know, like, you know, stealing of cars and things like that compared to other countries. Yeah. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of white collar crime, like a lot of embezzlement or, you know, like, uh, like in this case, like doing <clears throat> like, uh, misquoting figures or mm. like changing things or I feel like there's a lot more that stuff here. Right. Right. Then right. it is like point a gun at somebody and ask them for their money. I think if there's no perceived direct victim, it becomes easier to justify it in Japanese society. Ah, uh. So if the victim is the people of Japan, <laughs> the people of Japan, then it's not really a, a person. So. Well, I mean, kind of, we have this mentality in the West too. Like you, you have like anarchists who will steal from corporations because they're they're like corporations and not people. Yeah. And you're like, but a corporation is filled with people. Yeah. And they're like, don't don't think that far. Who derive their salary from said corporation? And if you like screw up their, pro I mean, there's still some you know non relationship there, but whatever. Hmm. And the other thing that I, you know, that you're just, you're kind of hitting on there is like, think about like, you know, wa, the, the, the peacefulness of society. And like, I've, I know so many people who like, if my husband cheats on me, as long as I don't know, it's fine. Mm. And I'm like, in most Western societies, it's like, it's always wrong, no matter if I know or not know. And if I don't know, I'm going to be even more pissed off kind of thing. Yeah. I suppose there is a, you know, 
don't know, don't care type attitude. Don't well. ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. <laughs> don't get caught. Don't get caught. Mm. All right, let's move on to the next story. Record 88% of Japanese feel friendly towards U.S., China, not so much. The percentage of Japanese who feel friendly towards the United States increased to an all-time high of 88.5%. Now, this I don't get. I don't get. Like, the bases are filled with uh, corona, and, like, everybody is super, like, not so happy about that. It's a Spider-Man movie, Johnny. That's probably what it yeah, is. Yeah, that Spider-Man movie was. No, this is uh, actually conducted <laughs> at the uh, in 2021 as well. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> But um, anyway, it says the uh, the figure is up 4.5% uh, from the previous survey a year ago, uh, according to the Cabinet Office survey. Uh, and then, which is kind of weird because uh, it also found out that about 85% of respons- uh, respondents see ties between Japan and China as not good or not really good. Mm. So the latest survey also showed a record 91.3% uh, view the, the current U.S.-Japan relationship as somewhat good or good uh, with up to 98.2% saying bilater- bilateral ties are somewhat important or important, also a record high. Mm. The, the 2021 survey found that 79.0% of the Japanese say that they do not feel friendly towards China, up from 77.3% a year earlier, and nearly four times the respondents who said they feel friendly. Uh, the latter group accounted for 20.6% down from 22%. So not a lot of people feel friendly uh, towards China. On, the, uh, on another neighbor, South Korea, the survey showed 62.4% said they do not feel friendly towards the company, down slightly from 64.5%, while, uh, while those with friendly feelings accounted for 37%, up from 34.9%. So the gist is Japanese people in 2021 felt better about America and Korea and worse about China. Well, they like Korean dramas. You know, can I just talk? Can we talk about that? Yeah. So- soft power. Mm. Okay, soft power is so important. And you've got export culture, like Marvel, Mm -hmm. the MCU in America is probably the most valuable thing that America is doing right now to project power around the world. Yeah. You know, I'm not kidding. (laughs) I'm actually serious about this. Like, think about this for a second. Captain America, the character. Right. Like, there are so many, like, little boys and girls all around the world who are looking at Captain America and they're associating this good guy with with the word America. And it's in it's it has a psychological impact on people. I mean, this is why China limits the amount of Western movies that are uh, you know played in theaters in China. That's why Marvel started making ones with Chinese lead characters so they could try and break the Chinese market, but they didn't realize that nobody cares. <laughs> That's the thing. Also, not they've it's got all, their own movies. <laughs> yeah, it's also true. But but what I'm saying is is like that, that's the per, that's the reason behind the policy in China is that they don't want to have all that foreign influence on yeah, the country, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And so American export movies really do a lot for Amer- American image abroad. And also, you know, other soft power things like, you know, f- you know, disaster aid and things like that. J- uh, Korea, Japan used to have a ton of fuck ton of export cultural stuff like manga, anime, uh, J-pop, all that stuff that used to really influence uh, Asian countries, but not so much these days because they're getting their ass handed to them by the Koreans whose export uh, media is just insanely good mm. like look at squid games netflix's number one show last year right it's yeah produced in korea it's renewed for season two mm-hmm. you've got k-pop international phenomenon videos that like you know bts uh black pink all of those all of those bands out there groups out there you know you go to any one of their youtube videos we're talking billions of views the first uh youtube video to go over a billion was gundam star and that was from korea yeah Um, you've got all of this incredible media that's coming out of that country and it's just, and it's infiltrating Japan. It's going to other Asian countries. It's going to China and the, and the artists, they'll have like a, like a five person pop group. Right. And they'll pick like one or two ton, uh, one or two like, uh, guys that like they're in charge of like learning Japanese and they'll Mm -hmm. have like two others that are in charge of like learning Chinese. And so when they go abroad, they'll have those guys in concerts and like talk to the, uh, the audience in their native language. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, J-pop could have done this years ago, but they just didn't. Well, they didn't see the importance of it. Yeah. Right. And also, J-pop artists tend to be shit, like, you know, level-wise. I don't disagree, but... Yeah. I mean... The Koreans are miles better (laughs) at dancing, at singing. You're not wrong. Yeah. The difference... You know, they sing in tune for a start, which is like an important (laughs) thing to do. Um, Okay, the reason why... And they actually have dance moves that are in time, which is another thing. God damn it. 
I mean, he's not wrong, but there's I mean, a reason for this. There's a reason for this. Go on then. The the difference in the, the the cultures is in Korea, they have like you know the the idols will practice their whole lives before they debut. Mm-hmm. They'll they'll start when they're like like four years old, practice every single day, get fantastic at what they do. They'll debut at like sixteen or seventeen or something like that, and they're just top of their game. Mm-hmm. In Japan, it's called Toriyazu debut, which yeah. means like, well, let's just put the kid in front of the camera and see what they do, and then we'll train them after they get popular. Well, Japanese stars are designed to sell products. That's that's why they're there. You don't think the K-pop artists are? Yeah, but uh, they the, are the product. That's uh, the difference. But they're also better yeah. at selling things. Yeah. So, I mean, this is saying now that people want to push anime and manga abroad. No, they're saying that they should. On culture exchanges with other countries, a survey found 40.1% said Japan should put the priority on promoting its pop culture represented by anime and manga compared to 20... Blah, 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 whatever. But... I don't know. I think that ship kind of sailed, maybe. Well, it's too late for that. I know somebody who took uh, J-pop artists, uh, radio DJ, a very long time in Japan, and he tried to take them abroad. Record companies weren't interested. They were just like, why would we do that? Yeah. Um, and he said, you're missing out on a huge opportunity, and they just ignored it. And then 10 years later, Korean boom happened, and you know they, they missed the ship. So, tough. But, you know, um, the US has always had a positive image in Japan, I think. China, not so much, you know. And they don't have any soft power in Japan either, really. Yeah, I don't think they care. China's no. more insular. With all their, their, their propaganda, is more, more insular, like inside. Well, if you've got that much population, why would you care about Japan? you got a sixth of the world, right? 120 million people. It's not a big 138, slice. right, in this country, I think? 120 odd, isn't it? All right, Josh, know. you gotta, you got to gotta Google that. I think it's 130 something. Maybe 132? The population of Japan is 125.8 million. Oh, wow. Million. I thought it was 130 yeah. something. I don't know why. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a tiny fraction, but, you know, it is an economic, it's the second largest economy for now, uh, a third largest economy for now. Uh, and, you know, Korea is coming up. But one thing I was talking about, Josh, is, you know, we, we uh, run a production company uh, here in Japan in, in addition to other things. Um, is that every time when we see a music video from a K-pop group, mm-hmm. the production value is amazingly high. And just watching, you like a lot of, because most of it's green screen. Yeah. And you don't even know it's green screen. You're watching, you're like, how the fuck did they get this good of green screen on, on like a, on a, on a music video that goes on YouTube. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and part of it is uh, actually because state-funded uh, technology, Samsung, mm. they, you know, they make everything from sensors for cameras to LCD panners to, panels to tanks mm. right so it's, it's quite, got quite a, a kit right quite a big they i mean they make us uh, uh, cpu semiconductors and you know storage they do everything and, the, and a lot of it gets you know is government funded mm. uh and then the, i'm sure there's also government funding that goes into their their uh media as well because you know like i said we were talking about it's soft, it's soft power mm. right? so i mean japan's still got anime manga you know it's pop culture could be used i suppose but yeah. it's a harder challenge if you watch beyonce when she's on one of the japanese tv shows and she has to watch Matsuken Samba, which is uh, like, you know, an old guy wearing a shiny kimono singing samba music uh, and her facial reaction to that. It's like, what the hell? Understand the difference between, you know, the Japanese and um, and Western tastes. This is awful. Yeah, I know. It's it's there's a big there's a big gap between what sells on TV here and what sells on TV basically anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Um but Korean Korean media is coming up. It is it is it's its own thing. It's not it's not necessarily American, it's not necessarily, you know, another country. It's its own thing and it's quite popular. So yeah. I'm kind of excited to see where it goes. Mm. All right, Alex, next story. All right, next we've got a Miyagi restaurant which refuses to accept customers money after the tsunami warning evacuation. So about midnight on the evening of 15th of January, a lot of late night downers were being served at the Bikuri Donkey in uh, Tagajo City in Mia- uh, Miyagi Prefecture. Just want to say that Bikuri Donkey means surprised donkey. Yeah, and it's, uh, <laughs> what, what would you describe it as? It's kind of a, it's a family restaurant. No, call it. it's more of a, uh, what do you call it? Salisbury steak place. You get, it's like the hamburger, like meatloaf. What would you call it? Hambagu to, in I don't English. Know, we don't have that. It's like, it's, it's like Salisbury steak or like hamburger. Uh, what's it called? Meatloaf. Rip. Rest in peace, meatloaf. Oh yeah, forgot Rest about in that. Peace. Yeah, I actually really, really like meatloaf. I'm not gonna lie. Really? Yeah, I do. I'm a serious big fan of his. Don't I'm get kinda, it. Kind of sad that he's gone. Yeah, a bit sad, but sorry. Yeah, this. Look, they sell this kind of crap. It's basically like the yeah, cheese like a, in hambagu, which means like it's not in. I guess it's like on. a beef burger and some rice. Yeah, it's like beef with with uh. 
pankel, whatever it is. Like, you know, it's, it's meatloaf. It's yeah. meatloaf. Yeah. It's fucking meatloaf with shit on it, and it with rice next to it. It's the surprise donkey. Continue. Sorry. So the donkey got even more of a surprise because at 12:15 a.m. a tsunami alert was issued for the area because of a massive vol- um, because of the massive volcanic eruption near Tonga, um, and the restaurant instructed all the customers to leave immediately. Um, but apparently, staff wanted the customers to to leave uh, and told people not to pay for the food. Uh, and even when the diners insisted on paying, they were refused by the staff and told to go to safety immediately. Did you see the satellite imagery on that on that Tonga thing? Yeah, it's crazy, man. Fucking you could see nuts, it man. from space. Yeah, yeah. So um, I hear Tonga's still covered in ash, and yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. couldn't land planes there last. They couldn't last communicate week. because like all the antennas were covered in ash and shit like that. And yeah. they're just like, yeah. Anyway, well, hope they're okay. Yeah. So. Um, you know, how would you react if you're in Miyagi and the tsunami alarm went off while you were eating your dinner? What would you do? Well, a little backstory on these it, guys. If you're at home, you don't know. Miyagi was one of the hardest hit places uh, from the 2011 tsunami mm. from the Tohoku earthquake. Uh, there's, if you guys, if you, if you, if you got, uh, what do you call it? If you don't have the stomach for it, don't do this. But if you do, just Google Miyagi Miyagi uh, tsunami. It's some of the most horrific footage of the tsunami coming in. Like they got it all the way from the beginning to the end. Um, and so that area is still well traumatized, you know, a decade later from that from that experience. And so, you know, this story is about the Bikuri, the surprise donkey staff saying, you know, because the, the alarm sounds and they're like, just get out, go to high ground. Don't mm-hmm. worry about anything. Well, you would do if you'd uh, been through that yeah. kind of experience. So makes sense. Okay, next story. We've got a creepy no-face snowman that got shared by uh, Studio Ghibli, the uh, animation company. Josh, can you pull this up and put it on the screen? Is there any way for you to switch it out while we're doing it live? All right, let's 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 while you're reading the story, let's get this amazing picture. Okay, so with Japan getting a lot of snow during this especially chilly January, somebody looked at a pile of freshly fallen powder snow and saw the opportunity to render the anime icon uh, in both a color and medium, unlike we're used to seeing him in. <laughs> Who was it? Um... It was none other than uh, Studio Ghibli uh, itself sharing the images of No Face, uh, which Kao they say nashi. were Kao nashi. yeah, which they were sent to them by somebody in Aomori Prefecture with a connection to uh, Hayao Miyazaki's anime production house. So according to Ghibli, the spirited away snowman is positioned uh, as if to startle visitors to someone's house, um, which he's standing inside of. They were sure any fans' shock would turn into smiles once they understood what they're looking at. That is kind of creep, isn't it? Yeah, like can a huge, you click on it and full size it? And then huge hit, member. Maybe hit F11 as well to F11. There you go. And click on it. Dude. So it's like a huge penis. Oh, God. It's so creepy. Like, if okay, imagine coming around the corner <laughs> in the middle of the night, somewhat drunk. Right. And seeing that, what the what would you do? I'd walk straight past it and probably not notice. <laughs> Be like, oh, that's a funny... So af- Lump of snow. <laughs> so after Ghibli, like they retweeted this. Ghibli's official account retweeted and this. And how many likes did it get or retweets? Or Lots, t- tens of thousands. And then um, after that, it became like a free for all for people linking their own versions of this. Josh, if you could pull up the other ones, I think there's three other ones that are linked in the file. Uh, but there's like three other versions of this creepy, creepy, creepy thing. Uh, and uh, and maybe just like scroll down. Actually, if you just scroll down, there should oh, maybe not. Click it to the links in the in the word file. There's like so it's the uh, the weird thing from Spirited Away, isn't it? That walks around after. Have you not seen Spirited Away? I have seen it. Yeah. It's it's a Kawanashi, right? It's like everybody knows, very famous anime character, and he like goes around going, uh, 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 you know? Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I do know what you're talking about. Why are you getting all weirded out? Why are you gonna make this awkward? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's just, your uh, rendition of it was a bit yeah creepy. It does kind of look like a penis. It does, doesn't it? Can you, can you maximize that there, Josh? Maximize that penis, Josh. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. I think there's two more. They're just you like. You could do a Matsuri with this. You know, they like the Matsuris oh, here. The penis yeah. mat- Matsuri uh, uh-huh. festival. Yeah. If you guys are listening to us, we're looking at uh, Snow Kaonashi, which are creepy. There's two more, which are equally creepy in the, in the Word document. But yeah. Um,. I don't know. Have you ever made out anything out of snow before that wasn't a penis? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have. Made an igloo once. Did you? Yeah. It's a bit shit. It wasn't a very good one. Oh, that one's got decoration on it. Oh. Well done. You yeah. have made that. And obviously in an area where all the other snow has melted, so they've done very well collecting that up, you know. 
I could see the effort. I just it's gone into it. I don't understand why anybody would like willfully go out in the snow and play with it. Like it just You don't have snow where you're from though. No, do you? no, no, we don't. We don't have water where I'm from. Yeah. In fact, it's kind of gonna be a problem in the future. But anyway, um yeah. Good job, guys. All right, let's get to our top story today. Your favorite. Yeah, this is actually I've been talking about this for two days now. So I'm gonna read this really quick. Uh so top story, uh Interac, I got it right. Don't be sick video. Uh, in a posting to Reddit, uh, user direct Rico, direct direct Trico, direct Trico, direct Trico. Uh, you know, I always love this. Whatever, like the official news, like CNN or like the New York Times, like has to like reference a, a, a Reddit post. <laughs> They've got to read out the username. Yeah, so mm. they'll be like, and from Reddit, sucks my dick hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> You're a real journalist. Go, go, you. Anyway, from Direct Trico, uh, uh, linked what appeared to be an interac uh, inter internal video that went on to explain the difficulty imposed on schools when an ALT suddenly calls in sick to work. The video gave an example of a young man pretending to stay up all night and then commenting that he'll just call in sick because he's tired. The video, since taken down due to a uh, since taken down due to a copyright claim, goes on to interview various teachers who explain how much the children love to see their ALTs and how disrupted it is when an ALT suddenly doesn't show up to work. Posted in Reddit's Teaching in Japan subreddit, most comments went on to criticize Interact, uh, an ALT dispatch company, for trying to guilt trip employees to going uh, to work sick. Although the video never actually says this, nor even hints at it, uh, sentiment was mostly negative towards the company or work culture in Japan. So unfortunately, you guys didn't see this video. No. So sad. Um, the video is pretty high production quality, like pretty high. Like it looked like they literally filmed this on a webcam and then they transmitted it over Zoom. Wow. <laughs> so shitty. Movie quality. It was so crap. But anyway, it was basically like a, what happens when you call into sick at work? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I watched this movie as a, a Kawa school owner mm -hmm. and I was like, yeah. You fuckers, you shouldn't be screwing around and calling into work when you're hungover or when you just didn't want to go to work. That's fucked up. People are counting on you was my initial response to this, right? Right. Because I don't know anything about this company. Mm. So I'm just like, you know, whatever. And then I go to the comment section and here we go. Let's read some of the comments, right? Okay. It says, so this is from It's Toki Time, Reddit, Redditor, It's Toki Time. There is a pandemic. Interact should be, should be encouraging teachers to stay home if they are sick and get tested, not trying to guild... ALTs into coming to work no matter what by using cute children. Oh yeah, there were kids in the video. Okay. This is kind of cringy. Like these kids are like, ah, I forgot exactly what they said, but it's like we love our ALT. ALT sound daisuke, me like Like they're so weird. Did they refer to the ALT as ALT sound? I have no idea. What, I don't remember what they said. I kind of, I'm not gonna lie. I kind of watched this drunk, but um, anyway. Uh, so, uh, it's Toki time goes on to say the Japanese teachers they interview are also apparently former elementary and junior high school teachers. How much do you want to bet they are currently employed by L link inter interact? What is link? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, batch work responded with, don't you want, uh, didn't you watch the video? ALTs are sick because they stay up all night gaming. So I put this in here because like, this is the only guy that I think that actually watched the video. Cause this right. <laughs> basically the video was not about coming to work sick. It didn't say it anywhere in the video. Like if you have a fever, please come to work and infect everybody. It didn't say that. It was just mm -hmm. like, don't fuck around. And I guess it didn't, it could have made it clearer. It could have been better about it. And like, I guess like showing kids is like ALT sensei. We love you is kind of, well is kind of, poor taste right and apparently interact is like a shithole company mm -hmm. that hires we'll talk about that in a second but like i learned some stuff after that but anyway there's two more comments that i want to read uh the enlightened fool commented i work for interact and this reminds me of a conversation i had in november with the manager my father had a stroke and i was terrified that i might lose him so i wanted to visit him over christmas the manager tried to guilt trip me into saying uh staying and made out the lack of substitutes was my problem and that i needed to consider the inconvenience that i would cause despite giving them uh notice a month in advance I'm so appalled by the inhumane and callous attitudes uh, of even the lowest level of management. And the last uh, comment I have here is uh, by Merlin Face. I'm glad that you guys have these names. Very tone deaf. As far as I know, this was just one branch who said it to people who took too many days off. How many is too many, though? 
and since been reprimanded for being insensitive. I know my brand has always been really cool and understanding with people taking necessary time off, even uh, if the morning of cause of being sick, I guess is like, you know, calling in sick in the morning. Mm. Uh, they helped direct my friend to a hospital when he was in a lot of pain with stomach issues and sent someone to interpret too. The BOE stands for Board of Education mm. are, per, are partially to blame though. They can be very unreasonable. I know Interact has lost cr uh, contracts in the past because uh, one or two LTs took too much time off so they canceled the whole contract means that they get nervous when it happens okay so alex you and i used to be alts mm -hmm. you used to own an, uh, an english school i own an english school mm -hmm. uh, if you let's just pretend that you've seen this movie it's like basically trying like t it's treating their employees like they're little kids like they're university students still it's like you should come to uh, school because if you don't it causes trouble mm -hmm. like how do you feel about that Depends on the messaging of the video, doesn't it, really? I mean... Again, I, Zoom quality. I can imagine. <laughs> well, it's not about the quality. It's about who's in it and what they're saying, I suppose. But I wish it was still up, but Interact apparently uh, Interact apparently uh, copyright claimed the video and right. got YouTube to take it down. Oh, so it wasn't a good reaction. So though. they weren't happy about it being publicly broadcasted. Mm. You know, I mean, if you're going to employ somebody, you shouldn't patronize them. Um, there are requirements you have to fulfill with any job. Mm -hmm. And, you know, doing them is part of your contract. Yeah. Um, and I think the problem is with these companies is that they've got a lot of um, sunk costs. Yeah. Because they bring the person out to Japan. Um, sometimes they have to train them. I don't know if they train them much or not. I don't know. Um, and then, you know, they potentially could lose contracts with the boards of education if people don't turn up as well. Right. Um, so there's a lot lying on the company that's providing these LTs. And, you know, there are people who turn up and just think it's a laugh. Yeah. So why should I turn up or, you know, why should I work hard or whatever? Generally speaking, um, people, I think, want to get into the JET program if they want to be an LT because just the pay gap. Yeah. Um, and even, I mean, Interact is, I would say, like candidates that can't get into the JET program usually will then try for Interact or people who are already in the country who can't get into the JET program for various reasons can then go into. Well, if you understand Interact. the relationship between private companies and public companies in Japan, mm -hmm. it makes a lot of sense why Interact is kind of, you know, viewed negatively like this. Yeah. Because if you work for a board of education directly through the JET program, it's, you know, their own people. So yeah. if you happen to take a day off, you know, the only people they've got to get angry at is themselves because they've mismanaged you. Yeah. But if it's a public body working with a private company... Then they get angry at the company. Yeah. So it's the company's fault. Yeah. So it's easy for them to bash the company to make them do something. So in that sense, you know, working for Interact is always going to be a worse position than working for a body directly. Um, because, you know, the public workers won't shit on their own people. Mm, uh, it depends. Oh, no, they might do. They'll but... shit on an ALT, depending. Yeah, I suppose so. That's yeah. true. But My take on this is that I, I knew a guy who used to do management for this company, and he said that basically the level of the workers is shit. Mm -hmm. And it's probably, if you work for Interact, I'm not talking to you. I'm just saying in general, like there's, there's great people and there's shit people wherever, whatever company that you get involved in. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, a lot of the people who work for a, like a, a ALT dispatch company like this, that only they do 30 hours a week, it's kind of semi full time. Um, there's no responsibilities outside of work. You don't take work home. This is all generalization, so don't don't get all angry at me if your situation is different. But for the most part, you don't have to you know take work home with you and things like that. And so this this kind of attracts people who are their job is not their main thing in life. Mm. They just do their job because they kind of have to or for you know to sustain their their hobbies or whatever it is. And so those kind of people you know, are just not as, what is the word? They're not as inclined to, you know, take the job as seriously as so someone who's like, this is my career job. I'm going to do this until I retire. Yeah. Right. I mean, who does interact until they retire? No one. Mm. Right. And so there's, it's, it's the incentivization here, right? Like the people who are working there are not incentivized to do their best. Mm. And at the same time, Interact is like incentivized to, you know, make sure that the ALT show up to work and so that they don't get their contracts canceled. Um, you know, and I'm, and I guarantee you that the budget that each one of these BOEs is paying for is less than what they would have to pay for, for a regular ALT, mm. right? That's why they're using one of these dispatch companies to begin with. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they've lowballed the government of, uh, 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 what is it called? The, the government body. Mm -hmm. And so they've gotten a discount price and then they probably over promised. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like they don't have the money or the budget to have a bunch of substitute teachers to cover for, you know, 
kids who are calling out sick because you know maybe they drank too much there's legitimate times to call out sick yeah. i'm sure that there's a lot of these alts who are you know just fucking off and not going to work oh yeah yeah i mean if you legitimately do have to call in sick though it can be quite difficult because mm. i mean i had a friend once who called at the board of education here uh, and they said uh, i'm not feeling very well which yeah. you know means you feel sick yeah and, and he the, said it in english yeah, yeah and the guy on the other side of the phone who was an english teacher didn't understand what it meant. Yeah. He thought not feeling very well was meant you just felt normal. Oh. Because you're not very well. I see. Uh, so he said there's no reason to take a day off. Yeah. And he said he wouldn't allow it. He said, I can't go because I've got like a 40 degree fever. Um, and it turned into this massive thing just because they couldn't understand what she was saying. That's just a communication problem right there. Interact managers, I think, are almost all native speakers or English teachers. Yeah. So um, it's, they should have good communication. Good. Yeah, who yeah. knows, man. I mean, even the ALTs that go to the schools, I mean, it's not like a full-on job, is it? You know, like a teacher stood there, you read out some shit. We're going to, we're going to, sorry, yeah. if you're an ALT, just, just go with us on this one, okay? You're not a real teacher. Not every single one of you, this applies to, but for the most part, you're not a real teacher. You don't have to prepare. It says, it actually said in the, in the video that was posted online that they don't prepare the lessons and things like that. A lot of the schools don't know how to use you. You use like a tape recorder. So you feel like your job's not important. It's, mm. it's easy. It's just easy to call in sick to a job like that. Yeah. You know, it just, it really just comes down to incentivization. If you feel like that you're important, if you're not there, the kids are going to like die mm. because there's no one there to watch them. Then it's a different motivation, different pressure to go to school and go to work. Then it's just like, oh, their favorite toy is not going to show up for playtime today. Well, that's the kind of wrong attitude that Interact took, right? Yeah. It's like, you know, the, the play thing's not going to turn up today. And, you know, that's not going to motivate anybody to... It was guilt-tripping. The video yeah. was pretty guilt-tripping. The it's kids' like, part. Yeah, but even guilt-tripping like that, I mean, it's like, I always got sick of the ALT image of, like, fun foreigner turning oh. up to play with. Well, because you're not a fun foreigner as well. Because I'm not fun. <laughs> so if you try and play with me, man, you're going to get slapped. So, um... But, yeah. but okay, here's a serious question though. Okay, like some workplaces in the West will require you to go to a doctor if you want to take a sick day off. Yeah. So if Interact was like, you know, having issues with people who aren't sick, we're not talking about people who are sick. If you're sick, don't go to work. My, my school's policy is if you even feel sick, don't show up. Mm. Like that's the thing. Because all of my teachers want to come to school. They want to see their, their, their students and they feel bad when they're not at school because they know that they're like imposing upon the other teachers and so the the incentive there is to go to work mm. right so when people do call in i know that they're seriously not feeling well and they shouldn't come and i tell them if you even have a low grade fever don't come to school yeah because i don't want you infected this pre-pandemic like this is for years we have like a we don't even count the amount many days that you have for sick where your sick days off we're just like if you're sick don't come to school well that's like you know empowerment isn't it so right. like people make their own decisions and you know, but then again, have a degree my, of responsibility, my but... teachers at my school aren't ALTs. They're teachers. They yeah. are responsible for their kids, for their, for their students. Um, but what, how would you, if you were Interact, right? Mm -hmm. And let's say that you were with all the best intentions. I'm not saying that they have good intentions because they probably don't. But let's just say that you have the best intentions. How do you make sure that you message to your teachers that, hey, it's actually important that you show up to work? Mm -hmm. And this sounds like such an elementary level, like... Well, they need to deal with it in a Western way. So... Um contracts lined up get um people to understand the value of the job message them like adults say if you have a sick day off bring in a sick note yeah to prove that you've gone to the doctor uh, which i think is a reasonable thing to do uh instead of making them use an for uh, yearly holidays your uh your annual days off holiday yeah, pay, have, paid pto paid time off yeah have sick leave yeah. you know that, that's reserved for that um, and then also educate the schools and the boards of education that, you know, the teachers that they are sending to them are not just play things to be, you know, had fun with for a spare lesson, you know, and try and empower them to be able to do more things, you know, at the job to make it more worthwhile. Um, you know, that's the approach, isn't it? It's not an easy answer. But... I think if you were an, AL, if you're an ALT dispatch company, uh, if you were an NPO, right, mm -hmm. and your goal was to actually educate the, the youth, and I think that, that all of what you said makes total sense. But I think the problem with this company is that their bottom line is profitability. What's the profit margin on it? 
Probably very small, right? Yeah. I mean, they probably have very small margins. So how much did they pay into our KLTs anyway? So uh, I just looked it up and like the minimum salary is 24, 2.4 million a month. So divided by 12, that's 20 mon a month. 2.4 million, million a, a month. I'm sorry, a year. That's a pretty good salary. 2.4 million a year divided by 20, 12 months is t uh, 20, 20 mon a month. Right, okay. So what does that equate to in US dollars? Like sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars a month. I do not know anything about US dollars. Well, that's how much it's not a lot, is it? Really? Is yeah, and then after taxes, because well oh, so, that's pre tax, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. that's pre tax. So guys, remember all of your salaries that you see in Japan advertise are pre tax. And depending on your employment so like my employees are Kai Shine, which means that they're full time regular employees. I think that's what that translates to. Um and so like 15% of their advertised salary just goes away to the government. I don't do that. Mm -hmm. Government does that. And in addition to that, my company has to pay an additional 15% above that to cover their, you know, company matched pension yep. and things like that. But I don't think Interact ALTs get any of that benefits. I think they just get cash and it's so like... It's Hakken, right? Hakken, yeah. So it's like, whatever. So they, yeah, so it's 20 mon a month. That's not a lot. If you live in the countryside, it's not bad, I suppose. Well, it's not bad. It's shit, but um, it's yeah. not as bad if you're in the countryside. Well, what my question is, is like, the, who is signing up for this company? Like, what, what are your goals? You know, if you, if this is your dream to do this, then yeah, having a patronizing video about don't call on a sick guys is like annoying as fuck for sure. Well, I mean, if you just come in because you want to get into Japan, get through the door, yeah. you know, and, and learn a bit about Japanese and Japanese culture or whatever. Or maybe the spouse of somebody else who's working here. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, you can't really criticize, but, yeah. you know, at the same time, I suppose if you've accepted the, you know how much you're going to get paid, you know the cost of it. And you know that you're going to get kind of handled like a, you know, a commodity. Yeah. Then just, you know, you've, you've accepted it. So just put up with it. I have to go through much more shit than this, <laughs> so, to be honest with you. So I don't see what everybody's fucking whining about. Well, I think what it is, I, I think what it is, is just that the, there's an, there's this like antagonistic relationship between the company and their employees. Yeah. And I think that um, what happens is like the employees probably don't, again, they don't feel, you know, part of the, they don't feel that they're valued. Mm. They don't feel that the company is, you know, thinking about them instead of their profits. Yeah. And then suddenly you get this patronizing video, like, you know, you should show up to work and don't stay up all night playing video games. And whereas there are absolutely those ALTs out there who are just complete screw ups and are probably the reason why this is happening. Um, there's also those ALTs out there, even working for Interact and other companies who are very, very serious about what they do, regardless of how long or how much money they work or whatever. They're serious about their jobs and they don't want to see this kind of crap. Mm. So I can, I can understand that. Well, this whole system of ALTs and Shido Joshu, whatever, assistant teachers, it's been around since like the Meiji period, basically. Yeah. Like Oyatoi Gai Kukujin, they called them originally. And they actually paid them really well. No, no, the, 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 the pay for even before the JET program, the, the pay is relative to the cost has just been going down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, it's going to hit rock bottom eventually. Yeah. But, you know, they need to get away from this thing of the Japanese way of doing things and then a foreign dude standing there. Um, and if you really seriously want to learn English, find out about how people abroad learn English and, um, and learn from that. We have, uh, Josh can contend to this because he's, he's actually sits through these classes. Or um, We actually have these kind of training courses at our English school where I sit down with the former ALTs because a lot of our English teachers come in as ALTs in the JET program and then they graduate or whatever and then they come on board on ours, at our school. And so I have to like, what is the word? I have to like uproot all of the bad things that they've learned about mm -hmm. education, erase it all and start from scratch. I'm like, okay, let's talk about how we actually should be teaching English. None of that ALT crap. Yeah. Because like, like, even if you're the best ALT out there, if you're letting the curriculum and the lesson planning happen on the Japanese side of things, chances are those kids are not going to understand or learn English. Mm. It's just, it's just garbage. And, and there's no fulfillment in that whatsoever. When you know that your 50 minutes with those kids mm. is uh, going to amount to shit, maybe a memory for some of them, but that's about it. It 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 can be demoralizing. Yeah, yeah. No, so. I understand that. I mean, foreign language education generally is like a nightmare in any any country. You know how much of it sticks. Think yeah. about it. Um, you know, best solution: send your kids abroad. You yeah, know? that's, but, that's but, the number one way of doing it. But getting back to the this ALT issue, just really quick, guys. If you're at home and you're an ALT, you work for Interact or maybe Jet Program, whatever. 
I would suggest that just kind of figure out why for you just figure out why you're doing what you're doing there there's another comment in this uh, reddit thread um i don't remember what the user's name but if if you're listening to this you know who you are um and he said he stated how like somebody stated it's it makes more sense to work for mcdonald's in the united states and coming and working for interact in in, in japan because you'll get paid about the same or whatever and this guy in the uh, responded saying you know i actually enjoy my japanese life uh the cost of living here is very very low compared to my home state in the united states uh, he gets paid like, I don't know, let's say $2,000 a month. He spends $1,000 in, 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 on utilities and rents and all those expenses. And he's got $1,000 he can either save or whatever. And while he's doing this, he's working on uh, a certification or, or degree or something like that from his home university online. So he's got, he's got his shit together. He knows what he wants to do. Um, so if that's your, if that's your goal, if you know that, you know, interact or jet program or whatever is a stepping stone on the way to something that you want to do good for you. If that's your end goal, I would seriously consider, you know, reconsider working for a company like interact. I just, just, it doesn't seem like I've never met anybody that worked for that company. And I used to like, I used to know a dispatching manager for that company. I've never known anybody who loved it. Mm. I know a lot of people who get tolerated and did it, but I don't know anybody who loved it. Well, if you've got a goal and you're motivated enough to come to Japan and get a kind of lower salary for a couple of years or a year or two, whatever. And then jump um, to something else, Before right? doing something else, yeah. you're not really going to be the kind of person who's bunking off work anyway. Yeah. Um, and if you feel annoyed or offended that somebody's made a video about people that do, just think it's not for me. Yeah. You know? It's not about me. Yeah. Um, That's good advice. It's the only thing you can do, really. Yeah. Just get on with it. Get your head down and get it done. What is it? Stiff upper lip, you British Stiff people? Stiff upper lip, you yeah. Guys, you guys talk about? Got a lot of uh, stock for that. You know, there's things you can change in Japan and there's things you can't. If you want to change it, it takes blood, sweat, and tears. And sometimes it just goes back again when you when you leave, <laughs> which is frustrating. Um, but, you know... To pick your battles, you know, and, and work through them. There's a book out there. There's a book out there that I recommend all of you young entrepreneurs and and uh, coming uppers uh, read. It's the Seven Habits by uh, uh, Covey. Please read it. Um, he talks about the sphere, your sphere of influence and your sphere of control, and interact is n in neither of those. Like it's just out of your control, so you shouldn't worry about it. So if they give you like a you know an offensive video, just ignore it. Like you said, it's like whatever. I'm only here for a year or two. Fuck you guys. Yeah. And do your own thing. Start your own company. Well, we did that. Called Interact. <laughs> With a T in it. With a T in it. Because I keep saying the T. <laughs> yeah. And you also say Espresso. I You can start do. an Espresso bar called Interact. No, I know it's Espresso. I know that. But then after you guys, like, I said it wrong a couple of times, you guys keep giving me shit about it. So I'm just going to... You, you want to sound like an idiot. So oh that's God, fine. Just call me an idiot. Yeah. You're American, so... <sighs> it's okay. Say. Whatever. Uh, at least I don't say coupon anymore. Yeah, that's a bad word. Anymore. I don't know where I got that from. Coupon. Listen, I was raised by a Japanese woman who doesn't speak English perfectly. In Las Vegas. In Las Vegas. Okay. Last story is yours. All right, so we've got a $4,000 cat-human hybrid bed. God knows what that is for. Oh, um, can, we, can we see the picture of this? Can we, can we throw that up? Just so, just so Alex can enjoy... Oh, your... The visuals, because Alex loves cats. That's oh, why he's reading the story absolutely, today. Absolutely, yeah. He you loves can them. Think of all your sickness nightmares you get from your what was that? friends. What was that called? Nantuka plasmosis. Uh, toxoplasmosis. Yeah, that you got as a kid from a cat. Look yeah. at that. See, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? That is absolute devilry. <laughs> he's burning. <laughs> Along with can those you, cats. Can you read the story? For just three hundred and fifty thousand yen to 467,000 yen, you can own this ridiculous bed that bends cat tower in human slumber. The bed features a cat tower step-like system uh, at the foot that allows your feline to climb a walkway spanning across the bed posts. And it's from uh, dinos.co.jp. Um, fuck that. No way. Can you imagine all the cat hair in your bed? That's disgusting. Have you ever gone to somebody who like owns... I don't want to name names, but have you ever gone into somebody's house for a person who owns a cat? Or no. maybe two, for example. No, I avoid cats like the plague. It's, uh, they always have disgusting homes. Really? Yeah, because there's just cat shit everywhere. Either poop cat or fur everywhere. or every. If they have like a non-shedding short hair cat that's like really like in a cold environment, it's not so bad. But most of the time, you're just like, wow, there is just dander and stuff and smell everywhere. My advice is buy a dog. Because a dog is an animal that loves you, loves you back, and you know, treats you as you know the proper, you know, master slave, not slave, master, master friend relationship. 
Um, whereas a cat just could not literally give a fuck about you if you died. Uh, um, yeah, cats are... I, I used to love cats, but then I, I lived with somebody who had cats, and that was enough for me to not like cats anymore. If you're Egyptian, I can forgive it. Do you know they used to kill people who like injured or killed cats in Egypt? True? In ancient Egypt, they really? did. They loved them, didn't they? Yeah, you're, the punishment for crossing a cat was death. Mind you, I like big cats. I like lions and stuff like that. Tigers. Isn't there an Amazon... Uh, what is it called? The Tiger King. I wouldn't live with them. That's a different story. Have you, have you seen Tiger King? I'm, no, you've got I to watch it. To. You no, have I'm to watch it. That. There's like, there's not enough teeth in that in that show for the amount of people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know no, I can I mean? imagine the kind. Yeah. <laughs> I like the idea of big cats, but I don't want to see them in a zoo, and I don't want to see them in someone's house. Uh, you know, I can just imagine them in Africa somewhere or wherever. How about it in someone's sports car in Dubai? No. No, okay. no, that's not acceptable. Um, yeah, but don't buy a cat bed, please, unless you're really into cats. And if and guys, if you're out there and you're working for Interact with no tea, uh, just think of the next step and just keep your eye on the ball. Just to clarify, there's nothing wrong with cats if you like them. Don't <laughs> spam me or send me loads of hate mail about. You, you don't know, actually dislike. Like, you don't actually hate cats. You just don't. They're not for you. They're just not my cup of tea, if you will. They're not my cup of tea. I like a dog, a nice friendly dog. Yeah, I prefer a dog as well. But I, but I like internet pictures of cats. Yeah, some of the internet pictures of cats are okay. Yeah. In a photo, they're great. As long as they're not anywhere near me physically, then it's fine. <laughs> All right, guys, that's been our show today. Uh, if you have any questions or comments or whatever, leave us a comment below, etc. cetera. Uh, if you guys have any topics that you want, you want us to talk about, also let us know, and uh, we'll try to cover it. If you're an ALT and you hated everything we said, we're sorry. We still love you, though. Bye. <laughs> no love from the Brit. <laughs>